all right okay first of all welcome guys uh, this is linux class basically we will be learning uh, red hat linux and i will be uh, uh, making you you know uh, learn all the concepts of linux also this class will also serve as the um, you know training for the red hat certification okay so you can easily crack any uh, not any the first exam rhcsa exam okay so it will be easy for you to uh, to give the exam and score the passing marks obviously and yes af after you know uh, after the course we are going to we are going to learn about automation as well so i will t i will i will show you all the table of contents okay and we will discuss each points uh, like we have so many points here to learn in this course and it will be a, a approximately 50 hours course in which we will learn the complete Linux fundamentals of Linux. Second, we are going to learn um, the automation part. Okay, like you can see at the end, shell script, Ansible automation. Okay, so this is what I have added added personally in this course, <clears throat> so that when you you know apply for the jobs, you will have two more bullet points or two more skills to showcase: sh uh, shell scripts and Ansible automation. Right. So I will go through all of these details one by one. Okay. Uh, let me first introduce you all to myself. Okay. My name is Amit and I have approximately 12 years of industry experience. And uh, I've been, you know, I started my career as a, we can say programmer. Okay. I was into web development and in within like one year, I changed to Linux and then I started as a Linux administrator. Okay, and slowly I moved into automation. Okay, so I have managed approximately 3000 plus Linux servers, which are live. Live means which are actually working. Uh, one example of live server, uh, when you type, let's say facebook.com and you get the website opened or maybe you, your app starts, okay, you can log into the Facebook application. So that data is coming from the live servers, right? So the whatever data you are getting on your browser, on your phone, everything is coming from the live servers. So I have basically managed in my career approximately 3000 live servers, not parallelly, obviously one by one. Maybe there was some automation activity. May, maybe there was some, you know, troubleshooting, which I have to do like that. All right. And I am also certified in Red Hat related certifications uh, like RHCSA and RHCE. So basically this course is for the preparation of RHCSA. RHCSA means Red Hat Certified System Administrator. Who is Red Hat? I will explain you in the upcoming slide. So Red Hat uh, Certified System Administrator. And once you clear RHCSA, you are eligible for RHCE. And RHCE is Red Hat Certified Engineer. Okay. So the person who is RHCE will be able to perform automation. Okay. So RHCE is a bit advanced. You need to learn complete automation with complete Linux. Okay. And again, together it's like hundred hours of course. Okay. So RHCE is 50 hours. RHCA says 50 hours like that. All right. So, uh, let me reiterate. We are going to learn RHCSA. This is the preparation for RHCSA and it will be a 50 hours course. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so let me tell you the table of contents, then we will move on to what is Linux. Why are you actually here in this class? Okay, why do you want to learn Linux? What are the benefits like that? Okay, so in the in the end of the session, we will discuss about uh, the exam pack, right? Uh, how is the what is the pattern of the exam? So okay, so what is the pattern of the exam and you know uh, how to practice exam stuff like that. All right, so yeah, so this is the course content that we are going to follow. And um, yeah, so this is all from the RHCSA. Okay, so these are this course content or table of content for RHCSA. First of all, we are going to understand the basic commands which are which are used in Linux operating system. Okay. Uh, then 
how to manage users user management then third is configure local storage which means uh, like you have a hard disk on a server and you need to create some partitions so you can easily create partitions you can easily manage multiple hard disks with this uh, with this topic with this uh, you know configure local storage topic then create and configure systems file systems file systems like uh, i hope you know uh, you might have form formatted a pen drive in the past okay like when you format a pen drive the data is gone basically formatting is reapplying a new file system in windows it is like ntfs fat 32 right similarly in linux there are some file systems so we are going to learn about those file systems when to use what and uh, it's it's like very easy just two commands but fundamentally we need to know everything operate running systems for example uh, ma process management okay this is the one main part in running systems operate running systems topic process management how to identify the cpu usage okay is your cpu usage going 90% 100% like that <clears throat> so we need to track that just a second yeah okay and how to tune your server for performance okay or we can say manage tuning profiles so there are several profiles available which you can set on a server okay so all those things we will check in this topic next is uh, deploy configure and maintain systems which simply means uh, you know installing something removing something update your operating system like that and we will also check web server nfs server like that next manage basic networking obviously we need to set ip address and all the other details when we are working on a server <clears throat> so how to do it it's very easy okay and with this we all we are also going to learn about firewall firewall is what it is used to uh, filter network traffic so in Red Hat Linux operating system, we have a software based firewall and with the help of commands, we can manage it. <clears throat> Next is uh, manage security. In Linux, there are uh, two important modules which are called firewall and SE Linux. SE Linux means security enhanced Linux. Okay, so these are two different softwares which work inside the operating system and which make the operating system more secure we are going to learn about these two systems okay and uh, next is managing containers uh again container is also very good topic when it comes to devops containers is a must okay so with linux you are also going to learn containers okay and all the fundamentals as well Okay, so the course content officially ends here till managing containers. But from my side, I have added two more topics. The first one is create simple shell script. Shell, shell script is a kind of a code which you are going to make for your for your own use. Okay, uh, let's say uh, you know you need to connect to hundred servers and update them. So normal procedure is log into server number one update log into server number two update right this will take maybe two days maybe three days but with the help of shell script you can automate this you you need not to log in anywhere your shell script will do all your job okay so this is uh, create shell scripts topic next is ansible automation uh you know to 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 be able to build a shell script to create a shell script you need to have a you need to have a certain level of programming skills not advanced maybe beginner okay you need to have understanding of variable you need to have understanding of how things work in a program like that for loops if statement like that okay but it gets complex for the non programming background people right so for that there is another tool from red hat it is called ansible again it is used for the same purpose for automation although it is more simpler you need not to have any programming skills you just need to uh, remember the ansible rules there are some rules 
Okay, just remember those rules. That's it. Obviously, we are going to touch. And uh, see if you if you dedicatedly learn shell script, it takes twenty five hours to learn shell script. Okay, and if you dedicatedly learn Ansible automation, it will take fifty hours. So what I have done is I have prepared the course in a way that within like two days or maybe three days you will be able to learn uh, shell scripts, maybe three classes. And within like two or three classes, you will be able to learn Ansible automation. Okay, please keep in mind it is not the complete course. I am just introducing you all to these automation techniques. So that's it's you know it's a starting. It acts as a starting point for you all. Okay, officially it's not part of RHCSA. If you don't want to learn this, it's okay. But it will be in your favor if you learn this. Okay, so you can mention shell script and Ansible automation in your CV as well. Okay, add it as a you know skill in your online job portals. Okay, so this is not the complete course, but I'll I'll tell you uh, like how to install Ansible, <clears throat> how to configure it, and how to start your automation. We will we will discuss multiple automation scenarios, practical ones. Okay, in both the cases. Okay, so any questions till now? You can unmute yourself and ask. So just a question. Yes. Uh, you said about SC Linux. Yes. So uh, what is as uh, SUSE Linux and SC Linux? Uh, okay, so SUSE Linux is an operating system. All right. Okay. Let me write it here. So you're talking about SUSE Linux, right? Right. So SUSE Linux is an operating system, but when OS, but when we say SE Linux, it is a security module. Okay. Okay. So is it a package? Uh, yeah, it's, you can say it's an application. Yes, it's a okay. package. Okay. Yeah. So SE Linux is available in Red Hat Linux, not in SUSE Linux. Okay. okay. So what is Fedora and Debian? What are they? That. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me tell tell you everything. Uh, basically, I was coming to that part only. Okay. So. I'll cover your question in this slide. All right. So the next slide is like, what is Linux? So right now I'm going to tell you about two things. Number one is uh, Linux. Okay. What is Linux? And then what is Red Hat Linux? And then uh, again, what is Fedora? And let's say Ubuntu or maybe Kali. Okay, so, so there are so many Linux versions available. What are those? <clears throat> okay, let's start with this Linux term first. So Linux is just another operating system in the market. Okay. Uh, this is a kind of a hobby operating system or a hobby project of Linus Torvalds. Okay, so Linus Torvalds is the man behind Linux operating system. So, you know, uh, back in the days when Linus Torvalds was in college, he's actually a programmer when he was in college learning programming. So he decided to, you know, create his own version of operating system. Okay. At that time, you know, at that time, Unix operating system was very popular. Unix. It was created by at and Okay, it was created by at and and uh, it was very popular operating system. It was based on C language. All right, so it was very efficient. It was most in, in uh, the demand was very high for this operating system. So at that time, <clears throat> since Unix was very popular, so Linus Torvalds thought of creating his own version of Unix operating system. We can say the clone of Line Unix. <clears throat> okay. So he knew that it is uh, based on C language and he was also well aware about C language, how to use it, how to create programs like that. So after learning the fundamentals of operating system, he started with his project and gave the name Linux L I N U X. Okay. L I N from his first name Linus and U X from the first two alphabets of Unix. Okay. So Linux becomes, uh, this is how Linux word is you know um, added to this operating system name so linux operating system again it is just a hobby project 
an open source hobby project of Linus Torvalds. So now what is open source? Open source means uh, you as a developer, you can have full access to the source code. Hello. Can, yes. Uh, sorry, sir. What is AT&T? AT&T is a very big company. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. Uh, Linux, uh, I, I just said like Linux is a operating open source operating system. The meaning of open source is anyone can access the source code of this operating system. Source code means the program files. Okay. And download the source code, modify the source code and redistribute the operating system with a different name. Okay. So like Ubuntu did. Ubuntu downloaded the source code of Linux. Okay. Let's say Ubuntu. So download the source code. Okay. Make some modifications, modify, and then redistribute. Did redistribute by a different name and the name they choose is Ubuntu. Okay. So this is how in the market, you see so many versions of Linux, Ubuntu Linux, Kali Linux, Mint Linux, Fedora Linux, like that. Okay. Similarly, there is a company called Red Hat. They also did the same. Red Hat downloaded the source code, modified it and redistributed it with a different name. And the name they choose is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. 